Hello everybody, so today I want to quickly look at how to randomize numbers using Vext. Very quick uh, demonstration of this. So I just want to create a grid node to start with uh, because I'm just creating a, few, a bunch of points so that I can work on those points. So let me, um, I think I'll just make them into points. There we go. Bunch of points, woohoo! It doesn't really matter where they're placed, I just want these points to show up here in the geometry spreadsheet. Okay, now I want to create an attribute wrangle and I will probably call this randomize vex. Uh, I'm using uh, the SE instead of ZE, I'm using British English here. Um, okay, so let's move that forward. And first of all, I'm just going to create a, an attribute. So let me create an attribute and I'll call it just test. And I will give it a value of four. And we can see in our geometry spreadsheet here under the points, it's running over the points. I can see that all of them will have that value of four. Okay, and I can change this to whatever I want it to be. So maybe I'll have it as two, let me change it to two. But let's say I want to randomize that number instead. Well, there's a way that I can randomize that number as a, a float value uh, anywhere between zero and one to start with. So all I have to do is use the function rand, okay, create a bracket. And here it says create a random number to one and zero from a seed. Fine. And my, uh, let me go back and check one more thing. So I need to put in here a float seed. Actually, I'm going to use an integer here because I'm just going to use my point number um, because every point number is different, which me means that the seed that's fed into this random will always be different. So to create, use point number. I'm going to refer to that using something called uh, at ptnum. ptnum means point number, okay? And uh, if I then add that, I can see now I have a random float value between zero and one. Now maybe I want to also, um, let's say multiply those. Um, I can multiply those values by whatever I want. I can maybe multiply them by five. And now I can see that they've all multiplied by five. In fact, let's create a channel parameter for that. And so we'll have channel parameter. It's going to be, uh, let me think of float value. So I'm putting a channel F and I'm going to call this mult for multiply. All right, is that correct? Yep. Okay, if I hit this button here, I'll see it pops in. And now I can make this between zero and one. Of course, if I make it here in the one, it's exactly the same as if I didn't have it at all because this will default to one anyway as a multiplier. Um, let's change this a little bit so I've got more range. I can, of course, just hit my middle mouse button and change my value to whatever I want it to be. Um, but another way is I can hit this little button here, this little settings button, and I can create edit parameter interface. Let's click on that, open that. And if I go down here, I can see all my little information that I've got here for this for this uh, node. And I've created my mult node here at the bottom. And the range is between zero and one. I'm gonna change that maybe to 12. Why not? Except, and now I can see that this range slider will move from zero all the way up to 12. And I'm, of course, these numbers are changing accordingly to whatever it's multiplied by. Okay, in the next lesson I'd like to look how we can fit these numbers between certain values uh, using the fit function uh, like we've done in the previous lesson, but this time we're using it with a rand function too. Um, so anyway, any questions, comments, criticisms, please leave them below and I'll be sure to get back to you. You guys have a great day and behave yourselves. All right, bye-bye.